Okay, so Anin Bojo, Wabgan and Dishnikaz, Georgian Island and Donjaba, and Anishinaabe Kwe, Ojibwe and Dao. My name is Haley Williamson. I'm a cultural resource advisor for Nogdwenmog Banojiag, Child and Family Services. Um, I'm from Georgian Island First Nation, and um, I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit today about uh, quill work. Um, so before I get started, I'm just going to start off with a quick smudge uh, to start us off in a good way. I always like to smudge all the materials that I'll be working with when I'm starting off a project um, to help keep me grounded and to help carry that good energy into the, the piece that I'll be creating. I'm going to start with a smudge by burning some sage. Okay, so um, today I'm going to be sharing with you how to make these. This is the first one I've made, so I'm going to make the second earring to this birch bark porcupine quill and sweetgrass earring. This is what it looks like. So I have some other ones on today that I've made um, before. So as you can see, the flower is all made out of porcupine quills dyed different colored porcupine quills. Um, so I'm going to be sharing a little bit of my knowledge on quilling while I work. And if you have the materials at home uh, and you want to follow along, that's great. Uh, if you just are here to watch, um, that's also great. So the materials that you will need um, that I have here today, try to see everything. Um, so here I have my three colors of porcupine quills. I don't even think I'm going to use the white ones, but um, purple and yellow, and they're soaking in some water to soften them. Um, and then I have my birch bark that I've already cut into this shape um, for the earring. So you would get a piece of birch bark that would look like this. Um, and you can put it, just hold it in the a warm oven and it would unravel like that. Um, it would become nice and flat. And then and you would cut out your shape that you want to use. Um, you don't have to do this shape. You can do any shape you want. I've, um, I've cut out a large circle like to make um, Christmas ornaments like this before. So um, I like this shape for earrings, but you can feel free to cut out any shape you want. Um, you're going to need some felt. So I've cut out the same shape of felt that I'm going to use for my back. Um, these earrings that I have on right now, I actually backed them with the, with the um, birch bark as well. So there's birch bark on the other side too. This one, I just did the felt on the back. And you're going to need some sweet grass. Uh, to line it with. So you'll see here, this is fresh sweet grass that's really green. Um, I actually have my sweet grass plant right here. <laughs> so um, I just pick some fresh sweet grass to use to line my earring with. And um, eventually it will be more of this color. Um, but you'll always smell it when you're wearing them. And that's my, that's one of my favorite things about having um, sweetgrass on my earrings is I can constantly smell sweetgrass. 
you're going to need um, a pencil, some tweezers, and you're going to need some scissors, um, an eraser, needle and thread, or you can use sinew or some other sort of string. Um, thimbles, I think that's what they're called, <laughs> um, to protect your fingers. And um, you're gonna need a pick. So these are a tool that we've made ourselves to use for quilling. So you poke the hole before you put the quill through. Uh, it's just a piece of wood um, and then a needle stuck into the end. Um, but I found these at the dollar store and they work pretty good. It's um, the same type of tool, but plastic. Um, so if you can't make one yourself, check out the dollar store and you might be able to find something like that. Um, and then for your earrings, you're gonna need to have, um, get some clasps and the earring hook. So, um, yeah, just a little bit about how I learned uh, to do quill work. Um, I learned about three years ago, and I learned from Mina and Theodore Toulouse, who came to Georgina Island to teach some of our members. Um, they were really great teachers, and I fell in love with the craft after that. So um, just kind of doing it on my own. Uh, I don't do it to sell or anything like that, but just for a hobby. And um, I find it's really calming um, as well as beading and other crafts. It's kind of a form of meditation and um, mindfulness. And so um, I really enjoy doing it. You can make all kinds of things um, with quills. So uh, I, growing up, my Nana always had lots of these little quill baskets in her house. And I never really um, asked or thought much about them. They were just there, um, but they are worth a lot of money nowadays. Um, and it takes a long time to make one of these, um, even just a small little one like this. But this is all porcupine quills all the way around, all on top. This is sweet grass here and then um, the birch bark. And on the inside, you'll see like, you have to have a pattern and so that it all folds in like that on the inside and makes your basket shape or your box shape. Um, some people also make larger quill baskets. Um, I've made this, this is a hair clip, hair piece. Uh, it matches these earrings that I'm wearing. Um, I made this, which I haven't finished yet. I need to still edge it, um, and it's going to be a pendant. Um, so I um, used the pattern of Isaac Murdoch's water walker symbol, and I uh, wanted it to look like a, a drop of water. And then that um, the lady in there wearing the dress and carrying the pail of water. Um, so yeah, you can do all sorts of things. This is a little fun little book. <laughs> um, and the pages are birch bark too, the thinner part of the birch bark. Um, and then there's just a few little design on the front. And then sweet grass all the way around. So you can pretty much have fun with it, make whatever you want. Um, it's a very old traditional uh, craft that our Indigenous people have done for many, many years. It probably would have started off most likely as a, a hobby and then a way to make money or um, something to trade for other goods. Um, as Indigenous people, um, when we see a past on animal on the side of the road, uh, we always honour it and we use anything that we can from the animal, whether it be for food, clothing, or even crafting. Um, so I remember when I was young, um, whenever I'd be in the, a passenger in the car with my mom, my aunt, or my Nana, if they ever saw a dead porcupine on the side of the road, 
they would stop, put some tobacco down and grab it and put it in the trunk. And I'd always be really, really embarrassed, especially if I had friends in the car. But now I do it myself. So it's funny how um, that that happens. But um, I do understand now why they did that. And because you can, when you um, appreciate the craft and appreciate that animal and the things it can offer, um, it is definitely way more meaningful. Um, so yeah, we'd always uh, offer tobacco uh, before we take the animal, um, offering it for giving its life and honoring its life and um, to carry it on, we will harvest the quills and then we'll use it for quill work, earrings, um, moccasins, um, yeah, lots of different things. And you can dye them pretty much any color you want, or you can leave them um, as the natural, the natural color for if you want to use white quills. Um, but yeah, they're really beautiful. They're really fun to work with. Sometimes you might get pricked, so you just got to be careful because um, they are sharp. Um, but you can either weave them into birch bark or even leather. Um, some people uh, will do a nice weaving um, pattern on their moccasin, on the top of their moccasin. So um, yeah, but today I'm going to be weaving them into birch bark for my earrings and then backing it with this felt. Um, yeah, so I think that's about it. So I'm going to um, start. So I'm going to start making my second earring. And as we go, if you have any questions, just feel free to put them in the, the chat. I was just trying to check the chat, but I got the um, my keypad wet. Oh, my mouse isn't working. Here we go. Okay. So this is, hopefully you can see everything okay. Um, so this is the earring that I made. I'm going to make the second one to this. Um, so first I'm going to start by drawing my design on to the front. Um, we use this side mostly of the birch bark because it's not going to peel on you. Um, this side, I do love how it looks, but the birch bark will peel off and uh, it could ruin your, your quilling. So probably gonna wanna use this side. And you can pretty much do any design you want to. Um, I find flowers are a pretty easy beginning um, design. When I was originally making this one for in um, for this video specifically, I drew a piece of cedar, and I was gonna quill it with just green and do a little piece of cedar on there but um, I realized I didn't have any green dye for my quills so I changed my design around so there's my flower that I just drew well if you can even see it kind of um, so you're going to want a tray that you can have your quills in uh, separate colors so the colors don't leak and then you're just gonna soak it. Um, I find, I found these little trays at the dollar store and they work really nicely. Um, but these, um, like, I think they're from, they're like old meat trays. They work really good because they're styrofoam or styrofoam plates. Um, yeah. So um, before you start, 
you're gonna back, you're gonna cover the back of your um, birch bark with tape. It just helps it from cracking. So masking tape or painter's tape. So I'm just gonna cover the back of it like this. And that will stay on there. Um, even when you, you'll just cover it up with your felt. So it'll be like that. So now I'm gonna trim that all around. Also, quilling is um, quite a messy craft. If you do it in your living room, you're gonna have um, quills probably all stuck into your carpet and they're not the most fun thing to step on. <laughs> so I like to do it outside if I can. Okay, so now I'm gonna start by quilling. Um, I like to just put this on my finger so I can, if I do hit my finger when I poke through, um, it's not gonna hurt. So I'm gonna start by doing the center of my flower first, and then I'll do the purple all the way around. Um, when you cut out your birch bark, you wanna quill along the grain of the, the bark. So as you can see on this one, it's going up and down this way. So all my quills that I'm gonna be putting in are going to be going up and down. Um, you can always do a few across after, um, but so you're going to poke a hole at the, I'm going to start in the center. So I'm going to poke a hole there and right underneath on the other end of where I want to go. And then I'm going to grab a yellow quill. I'm going to poke one side into the one hole I made. And then you'll see it pop out the back. You're going to grab it with your tweezers and pull it just a little bit way through. And then you're going to bend the quill on the front, put it through the other hole that you just made, and pull the rest through so that it will look like this. Your first quill is in. And it will start to do this on the back. And then you'll just trim all that off um, once you get, once it starts to kind of get in the way. And I like to pick, so as you'll see, like some of the, they're all gonna be different sizes because they are natural cord fine quills. Um, so this one here on the right um, is a lot thinner than this one is a bit thicker. So I like to pick the thinner ones. It just looks nicer, depending what you're using it for. But, And you can bend it and put it through with your tweezers or your tool, or you can um, bend it with your fingers and then just pull it through with the tool. Whatever you find is easiest. I 
kind of have to pick through to find your clothes that you think will fit the spot you're doing. Um, and their hair, like there's the porcupine hairs, <laughs> gotta pick through those too. Okay, and my last one for the center. So I used five for my center um, yellow. So I could trim this off now if I didn't think it's gonna be in the way. You're just gonna trim the back as close, pretty much as close to the stuff as you can. So it'll be like this on the back and that on the front. So now I'm gonna start the purple leaves. And when the porcupine quills dry, um, they won't pop out. So you don't need to worry about that. I used to always worry about trimming it too close to the um, the birch bark because it does feel like they might fall out, but it's never happened. Um, actually, this this um, quill box, there's one piece here that you can see has popped out. Um, probably because it just, yeah, where she, where it was trimmed, um, was too close. So I can always replace it. And also sometimes when you pull one through, it might break and then you gotta pick a new piece. Oh, also um, what I use, oh, see that one just broke when I pulled it through. Um, what I use to dye the quills with is RIT, spelled R-I-T. Um, it's a fabric dye and I just dye it on the stove top, like in boiling water. So I'll do pot, um, put my quilt, however many quills I want to dye in the pot with the dye and Boil it until it's the color that I want. Um, and then I just keep them in separate containers like this. Um, so there's some purple and I just put some paper towel in the bottom so that it can kind of soak up that extra, that extra dye. And you can get the writ um, dye as powder or liquid. I like the liquid kind of best. So there's what it looks like now. So I'm just gonna trim off the back again. And I'm outside, so I don't have to worry about where they fly off to. So I'm gonna start on my second pedal.
so I probably could have done a much smaller design for this because <laughs> um, it would have been a lot faster, but I'm almost done. So I'll just go until I finish. Um, so once I'm finished the quilling part, I'm going to do the edging um, with the sweet grass. It's just sweet grass and um, string or sinew. Um, and you sew that on while sewing the back uh, piece of felt on. Um, and then once you get that part on, you can just add your earring hook. And um, yeah, so if I had done like a quick little design like this one, a star or um, just you can do little X's and it kind of looks like stars. But um, sometimes I do too much. These I find work better than using tweezers. Um, I got them for beading, but I find they, they're less likely to break your quill when you pull it through. Whereas the tweezers, I'm, it always snaps the quill. So I just got them from a beading store. Some of them are just harder to pull through than others. And if you notice that maybe when it was a quill was harvested, um, if the pointy end, one of the pointy ends got taken off, um, you won't be able to use it because you need it to, you need that pointy end to be able to come through the hole that you poke. But as you can see, it's a very relaxing, meditative craft. Um, just like beading and many of our other crafts are. And the more 
the more you have um, at the back, the harder it starts to be to see where it comes up through. It's so small. Sometimes you just have to make your hole a little bit bigger so that you can see the quill pop through. So last petal, this is what it's like right now. I'm just gonna add one more triple petal. And I've been doing, I think about seven quills on each petal. And then there was five in the center. So you really don't need that many to do a small design. my final flower that uh, looks very similar to the one I did on the other earring. Um, so as you can see, all the quills are going up and down along with the grain of the birch bark. And that just helps it too from um, preventing it from cracking and uh, the tape on the back as well helps it prevent from cracking. So now I'm gonna add my piece of felt to the back. Um, and all I have to do now is just get some string. My dog chewed this, so that's why it looks like that. <laughs> string and a needle. And I'm going to double it and tie the knot on the end just because this is beading thread. Um, I usually use a thicker um, thread or string or sinew like a, um, but I wanted white and the only white I had was this beading thread and it seemed to work okay. I'm just going to double knot it on the end. Okay, so now I'm going to take my needle and so that my knot is on the inside and you're not gonna see it, I'm gonna just go through the one side of my, um, and this is where I like to use a piece of leather to push the needle through because it is not um, as easy to push through the birch bark uh, as you'd like it to be. So I'm gonna just go about that far away. Um, even farther would have probably been better because you don't wanna crack and um, for it to go right through. So you just have to be careful of this part, but for the one, so now my knot's gonna be on the inside so I can trim this down. And I'm gonna pick my seat grass. So I have my seat grass plant right here. So I'm gonna take about three pieces, I think. How many did I do on the other one? three or four. You don't want it to be too thick. And 
I had my tobacco here. So I'll offer some tobacco for this after I have to see. Offering my Sema for the sweet grass. And I'm going to use that much, should be good. That smells so good. So, this part is kind of hard because you have to hold just until you get it to attach, you have to hold on to it pretty firmly. Um, so you're going to put it where you want it, so it's going to go all the way around the edge. So you kind of have to hold on with these fingers as you start tying it around. So you're just going to weave it in and out, and I'm going to use this leather to push it through. And you're going to go all the way around. The whole earring. But I'm still hanging on to it really tightly because it hasn't quite sat yet. But as you can see, it's starting to attach. So now I can kind of let go a little bit because it's starting to attach. You can also, if you don't want to do sweet grass around the outside, you can also beat it. So you would just do similar as you attach the um, back piece, whether you're using felt or another piece of birch bark and just um, Sew it together while adding beads each time and kind of edge it. If you are a beater, um, you can do different patterns, whatever. I just love the smell of sweet grass on my earrings. And since I was out of green quills, it kind of adds that green to the the earring. And make sure you're pulling really tightly as you go. and adjusting your sweet grass how you want it. So I see it's 11.30, so if you have to log off, that's totally fine. I'm just gonna finish these. So if you wanna stay and watch, feel free. Shouldn't be too much longer because I'm almost done the edging and then all I have to do is add my earring hook. So if you want a faster earring, just do a smaller pattern. Okay, so now I've kind of gotten back up to the top. So you'll see the sweet grass will all gather like that. Um, if you like that look, you can definitely keep it there. Um, you can trim it a little bit, but um, for earrings it might kind of get in the way. So I'm gonna just, go around a couple extra times with the top in the center so that it's sturdy. And then I'm gonna tie it and make my earring and add my earring hook. So probably about that is actually good. And you just want it to kind of go through the center. There we go. 
So now I'm going to trim my sweet grass. So that it looks like this. And your um, strings coming out the center. So I'm going to add my clasp and my hook. So you'll need a little clasp like that, just a round metal circle. And then your earring hook. So this is where I'm going to put this circle on. And just tie it around a couple times. So it sits nice and straight. And once you think you have it in the right spot, you can tie it off. Make sure you've gone around a few times so it's nice and sturdy. So I'm going to tie that off with a double knot on the back on the felt part because it's white and you won't really see the knot. And and you can kind of go through the felt a couple times just so it's nice and sturdy. And then pull it nice and tight. So I'm going to trim that off. And now I have my clasp there. So I'm going to use this tool again for to add my earring hook. So I'm just going to open this clasp up a little bit. I need to hold it with these tweezers. And then I'm going to add the hook. And I'm going to close it back up. So there's my final earring that I just made. And there's the other one that matches. Oops. So these ones that I have on were a little bit um, bigger. So I kind of wanted to have a smaller size, so these ones are a little smaller. So eventually this sweet grass will turn to about this color. I did a large um, a large um, like spacing with the string just to try to get them done faster, but there's my final product. So thanks for watching. Um, sorry I went a little bit over, but surprisingly not too much actually. Um, uh, yeah, so if you have any questions, feel free to um, reach out to me. Um, or if you're looking for some materials, I'm sure I could probably hook you up. Um, yeah, so thank you for joining me today and listening and I hope that you enjoyed. Miigwech.